All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, as uh, um, Shivam already introduced me, I'm Ankit Verma. Um, right now here, I am in Pasadena, California, USA. And thank you uh, to Learning Curve for inviting me and speak to you all. And thank you, you all, for joining. So today, um, I'm just going to talk about journey, um, you know, the journey which we all are taking right now at this very moment, the journey of our life. Uh, this is the only journey, you know, um, where the destination does not matter because, of course, our destination, we all know, is the end of life. But this is the only journey where the journey actually matters, not the destination. So let's see. Um, I, here I'm going to present how my journey has been till now. And hopefully I'll be able to help you guys, um, maybe give some advice, and hopefully it will be helpful to you in future. So I started my schooling in small school in my hometown, Jaunpur, in Uttar Pradesh, um, called Bal Govind School. The principal of that school was teacher of my father. So he started that school, and I, I was in this school. And this is a small school. Uh, for example, when I was in class six, the, we were, I think, 10 or 12 students in class fifth. And so there was only this, uh, so one class had like 10 to 20 students in this school. And then in, when in class seventh, I joined St. John's school. So this is a big ICC board school. And it was a big step for me. When I was in small school, then, um, you know, we were way less number of students in a class and teachers knew me teachers knew everyone and teachers were very polite and they were you know they were pretty good and in teaching we had fun a lot when i went to this big school there were like 50 students in the section and i never imagined anything like that that was something totally new for me and on the first day of school i remember clearly that i was like not me, but whole class was scolded because teachers were like the teacher was asking question like, do you guys know noun? Do you know pronoun? Do you know what it's verb? And no one was answering. I was also just quiet sitting there and teachers scolded everyone that, hey, you guys are not going to pass. If this is how you're going to be, then you guys are not going to do anything in your life and all those things. And I was so upset at that point. I came back home and I was sitting on the in the corner and I was crying and my father saw me and he asked what happened I told him everything and then he asked me do you want me to go send you back to old school and that time I said no I am not going back I'm, I'm just not gonna run away it was years ago like few days ago only I found out what exactly was happening during that time so when my parents decided me and my sisters to send to this big school, St. John School, all the relatives, all the, you know, all the neighbors, they were saying that don't do this. Don't send your children to this new school or this bigger school. They won't be able to sustain, they won't be able to survive and they won't be able to keep up. And all those things, I mean, in fact, one of my relatives said, why are you even sending your son to the school? Like, just try to get him start sitting on the shop and get him into the business. Um, and just imagine yourself to be at that point, you know, that uh, your son, you decided to put your son and your children to this big school when everyone else was telling you, don't do it. And this on the very first day of school, you see your son just sitting there crying about how he was treated. And that's how that's why I want to discuss this first point courage and decisions you take in your life. I mean, right now, I mean, with respect to that example, what I want to say is there will be some difficult situations. There will be times when everyone will say, No, you should not do this. People will say, No, don't join college right now, just go and do coaching for one year. Maybe you will get. IIT or maybe not, there will be people who will be trying to divert you. There will be people who, I mean, everyone will give you advice because they think that they are giving the right advice. 
but it will be only you who know what is right right only you know what you can do with your life you know your ability you know what are you are capable of so it's your decision you i mean of course um you have to listen to everyone but you are going to do you should do what you think is right at this age i believe i'm i'm not sure about the age distribution of my audience i'm assuming from 16 to 20 i guess or 16 to 19 age at this age of course none of you uh, i mean i'm also 21 year old we haven't seen world that much right we haven't gone out we are not that much experienced so it's important to listen to others but at the end we are capable of uh, taking the right decision and decide what you think is right so anyways um i joined st johns and class 11th and 12th these are the two classes which were best for me i mean uh in class 11th i was uh, offered a blue house vice captain position in my school which i rejected giving a very dumb reason i told them that i want to concentrate on my studies and it was class 11th people usually concentrate on their studies in class 12th well nevertheless i rejected that and then in 12th they gave me they offered me blue house captain position and this time i accepted and this position blue house captain has uh, helped me a lot to develop leadership skills so of course in the school there are four houses blue red yellow and green and they all compete with each other in co curricular activities and we have at by the end of the year we have first second and third position for each of the houses well um i should remember on the sports day uh, on when most of the important events are happening and this is a day when a house clearly lead or clearly lag you know on the sports day the blue house was at the fourth position by the end of the day i checked the score board score board and i saw yeah we are the fourth position i went back to the tent where blue house people all the students of blue house was sitting and you know you could clearly see look at their faces and you know that they are disappointed in you you know that they are going to tell you that you have failed them well at that point i was also disappointed and sad but you know you are not as a leader you are not allowed to show your emotions you are allowed to be you know you you sh- you have to uh, keep your head held high you have to keep smiling you have to make sure that you motivate others and don't get mod- demotivated yourself well um yes by the end of the sports review at the fourth position and then we went on and uh, we worked hard and by the end of the year we were at the second position and i was so happy it felt like yes i was able to do something i was able to manage the blue house and get them to fourth position uh, sorry to the second position for the fourth position so that's where the leadership quality comes right academic studies these are important yes um but apart from these things you also need to develop other skills which you cannot study for you cannot study how to develop i mean you can always take courses and people always tell you but these uh these skills like leadership skill you will develop only by practicing only by applying only by being at the position where you can uh, act as a leader and you know there's another thing which i want to talk about here is about the failures you know so on that day on the sports day when we were at the fourth position the only thing i was happy about that this is the bottom most position we can be right the only thing the only good thing about being at the bottom is that the only way you can move for, move is forward is up so if you're at the bottom of the stack don't worry that's a good position because you cannot go even below that you know right you can only move forward you can only move up 
And the worst thing about being on the top is that you there's only one way you can go, which is bot down. So it's okay to be at the bottom. But what is not okay is uh, stop trying. The moment you stop trying, that's when you know that you're lost. Well, so this is just a picture of me and my classmates from class 12th. Um, and this is class 11th and 12th were the classes when I really made you know, good friends like Shivam, Abhishek, Anmol, and all the people from the learning curve. And uh, of course, other, other than that, I made a lot of other friends. Um, yeah, so let's move on. Of course, as we are talking about school friends, have fun. Uh, these are the friends who are gonna be with you all the time, you know? These are the times when you're gonna look back and think about how things were in your school, how things were with your friends, and you will really enjoy thinking about that you know today morning when i was making these slides i was looking for all these pictures and by going through these pictures it made me smile it made me happy it feel like it was such an amazing time so you know what work hard study hard play hard i mean this is i know it's easy to say difficult to do but do those things and of course have fun with your friends they're just amazing you'll never find them again you know so um, in 2015, I passed from the school, and now it was the time to decide what is what is what am I going to do next. So I had given, of course, J mains in advance, and I got IIT Mad uh, physics in IIT Madras. And so I had options: either I can join IIT Madras and take physics, and or do coaching. If I'm going to do coaching, then where should I do? Kota, Varanasi, or my hometown, Jaunpur? Uh, people were saying that IIT Madras is not good for physics, it's good for engineering and so on. So it was just, uh, it's all confusing. And here, one of my friends helped me a lot. So I still remember on this morning, somewhere around 9.30 or something, this friend of mine calls me and said, hey, have you looked at the paper today? And I said, no, he is like, uh, there is one uh, institute called Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, IIST, and they are offering undergraduate degree to in aerospace and avionics. So why why don't you look into it? So that's where uh, that was one of the turning point in my life because IIST, my this undergrad college, gave me so many things which I never even thought of. Um, so this is where opportunities and luck comes in, you know, you need to be lucky to be successful. Well, you need to be lucky to grow and you need a little bit of luck for sure. And this is something which you cannot control at all, which is okay. And that's perfectly fine. All you have to do is just not worry about it, but something you have in your control are the opportunities and how are you going to use them? Well, on this morning when my friend called me and told me about IIST, I could have just thought that it's okay. I mean, I might have chosen to ignore it, like completely ignore it and don't worry about it because I really want IIT and I, all those things. But I decided not to. I decided to look into it and find out what exactly this institute has to offer me. So here I want to talk about the opportunities you get nearly every day in your life well well every day in your life will be a bold statement well let's say you get opportunities now and then in your life you know um it's very easy to neglect the opportunities and you know there are some times when you even don't know that this one particular thing is an opportunity for you what i'm saying is just be careful like this learning curve is an opportunity for you you know, you don't know whether, uh, well, well, if you decide to not to go towards this path and, you know, think about, okay, I don't think I need the learning curve and all those things. Well, maybe that is true. You might not need, but you are just missing out uh, what you could be 
by being here or not being here. So always try to explore. I personally have ruled out a lot of opportunities. I know, I acknowledge them. And honestly, I also feel guilty that if I would have looked into that, maybe I would have been better off. So yeah, always look for the opportunities and you know, just don't uh, ignore them. It's easy to ignore. Uh, it's difficult to explore. Well, of course, you won't be able to take uh, you know, advantage of all the opportunities and that's okay. You cannot and you won't be taking advantage of all the opportunities. So you have to decide which one is important for you. What are your priorities? What you really want to be and act accordingly. So a little bit about my undergrad college. Uh, so I asked Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. So this is an institute which is under Department of Space and uh, it is dedicated for training engineers and scientists for ISRO. So if you get into this institute, then you will get an assistantship uh, if you keep, if you put your GPA above 7.5, then your fees for the next semester will be waiver. So you don't have to pay any fees, tuition, hostel, or food, anything at all, They're completely free. Well, since they are paying uh, your fee, they want you to work for them, which is that is ISRO wants you to work for them. So once you complete your undergraduate in this institute, you will have to work for ISRO for at least three years. After that, you are allowed to stay or you are allowed to just go and get some other job. Apart from all this, uh, topper from aerospace and avionics branch, these two branches are sent to Caltech, California here for their masters. So last year in 2019, I came here as a, to do my masters. And once we complete our master, we had to come back to India and work for ISO for five years now. Because they have, they have again, they are paying money for our planes, our travel, our stay, our fees and everything. So we had to just work for them for five years. And I believe ISR is not a bad place, obviously, to work, right? Um, well, so a little bit small, small story here regarding how I joined ISR, sorry, IST. Um, so I applied at IST and I went for counseling at Delhi. And this was the first time ever I used a flight. So it was the first time to go to airport and you know be on a flight and all those things. It was just it was nice. So after the counseling, I actually did not get admission in IST. I was at the 15th position in the waiting list for avionics branch and 22nd position in the waiting list for aerospace branch. So after the counseling, I came back to my home and all I mean, you know, with IST. I had so much hope, you know, I was so happy that, okay, I'm going to get into this institute and I'm going to work for ISRO. I want to be a scientist, which I always wanted to be a scientist. Everyone wants to be, I mean, a lot of us. And here I am just one step behind my goal. And again, I'm at the waiting position. During that time, every day I was looking at the website and look at the waiting list. Am I going to get it? Am I not? And finally, one day I got it. And I went back to Delhi, this time by train. Um, and uh, we submitted our documents and everything. And me and my father, we were coming back by train. And that's when we got the news. At that time, the chancellor of IST was Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. After all, he was the reason, like he was the one who pressed very hard to establish this institute. So he was a chancellor. Um, so while I was returning on, after completing all the paperwork on the train, I got the news that, okay, uh, Dr. Kalam has passed away. Um, yeah, it was a, a bit sad moment. Like I was really looking forward to meeting him at IST. Uh, I mean, he used to stay in the 
hostel like in the students hostel you know so like in this hostel where we uh, all the students are living he used to stay there instead of uh, the guest house the all nice guest house he has been offered no he used to stay with, ch- with uh, these students was such an amazing guy right? but sadly that didn't happen that's okay uh you do get these bumps well um so how was my undergrad life um so first year was nothing much first year was a year when i was still establishing myself i was still trying to figure out what exactly is going on how people are how the things go around in this institute and everything it was second year when i really started you know to get into work um i re- me and one of my friend two of us had a really strong urge to do something new and that's and now i want to talk about the excitement and motivation you should re- usually have in your life you know just like you there are thousands of like millions of people in india only who are trying to get good marks right uh all these people who are trying to aim for doctor ias or engineer excuse me um so there are millions of you who are trying to do the same thing right like achieve the same thing so what what is it that makes you unique what is it like you makes you different and of course everyone is different in their respect but what is it that makes you stand out uniquely from these millions of people you need to have some excitement to do something new well i'm not talking about in academics only if you really like football and you really want to be a football player that's perfect that's great go for it but again just like you there are hundreds of thousands of people who really want to be a footballer you might be interested in cricket that's good you go and join a coaching for cricket and but again there are thousands of you who are willing to be just like you so what is it that makes you unique right and that's where excitement and motivation come from there are a lot of people who are of course forced to be in a particular field where they are because of which they are not that much excited about their work about the thing they are doing so it's really important for you to maintain this excitement and motivation and believe me it's a very difficult task i mean hi i'm not excited about uh, things which i'm doing all the time and i'm i'm not motivated to do my work all the time that's why we find i'm not asking you to be excited and motivated all the time but you have to make sure that spark in you still remain I remember like when you were a kid and you really wanted to be a cricketer or you really wanted to be a scientist or you really wanted to be an astronaut you know all these things the that spark that excitement you had when you were a small kid that slowly decays with time and that's perfectly natural there are very few people who are able to keep that spark alive and it's a difficult thing but you got to do it well i guess uh, i believe in the uh, future in this in next few slides i'll talk about what are things you can actually do to keep this excitement so this urge to do something new this excitement to achieve something better to make yourself better and and the motivation you have this energy which you have to make something new make yourself stand out of the crowd is something you need to keep up and that's what this friend of mine and me had in the second year during second year we went from one professor to another asking them hey can we do something can we do something new you know everyone is here studying for semester studying for exams and test and completing assignment assignments but what is it uh, that will you know make me different from them we two of us want to do something better something different which no one else is doing something extra and that's when both of us got involved in a nano satellite project which my institute was uh, working upon with in collaboration with other institute in united states um that time in the second year when we both got involved in this uh, we had classes and labs from morning 9 o'clock till the evening 5 o'clock 
And once that is done, we have breaks. Like after five o'clock, uh, we are just free to do whatever we want. We work on our assignments, homework, have dinner, and then again start working on the satellite from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. It was, well, depending upon who you are, depending upon how you look at it, you might consider this experience a bad experience, an exhausting, tiring experience. Or if you're like me, then you'll consider this experience is an amazing experience, an experience which you'll never ever get again. You know, I agree that we used to get very less sleep. Hell, I saw my friends sleeping in the class. This one morning, one of my friends was sleeping in the class because he had worked all night with us. And uh, professors look at him and say, hey, you, wake up. And then he says in a very weird tone, he says, Kya karte rehte ho aap uh, it was, he said in a weird way, of course, I even got the meaning and it was just funny. So of course, there are things, uh, things affected us. These things, working so hard on extra things affected the academics. I actually got low marks during those semester, but I was perfectly fine with it because I was happy and satisfied because I knew that, okay, I am doing something which these uh, these 100 students are not doing in this institute. I am doing something better, something extra. So yeah, these were the amazing time which I had. Stressful, but amazing. But and doing all this time, this was the first time ever uh, that uh, a team was working so hard on the satellite mission. The satellite mission was there, had started a year ago uh, before we joined, but there was not much progress in it. And it fell upon us to actually make progress. At that time, since we were the first one to work on this so hard, we didn't have any guidance. There was no senior. We were in second year. There were third years and fourth years. I was senior, but no one was there to help us. No one knew how to work on the systems which we are working on. We knew what we want to do. We knew we, what we want to make, but we didn't know how to achieve it. We didn't know how to proceed. We didn't know what is the next step we should do or uh, what is the next step we should follow to achieve our goal. And that's where my experience as a Blue House a captain, you know, helped a lot. That's where I, that's where I was able to tell them. That's where I was able to find out, okay, what is the next thing we are supposed to do? That's when I told my friends, hey, you do this, you do this, I'm going to do this. Once we're able to do this, we can put all this thing together and make this work. That's when I was able to lead. Well, um, because of all those things, I got the internship in the United States. Of course, the satellite program was in collaboration with an institute in USA. So I got an internship in USA to continue my work in this satellite. Um, so here are just uh, some pics from my uh, internships. So I went to United States three times during my undergrad. All the three times I went to the same place, Boulder. All the times that three times I was working on the satellite. And of course, uh, the first time I went, we were just designing the satellite. The second time we went, we were uh, coming up with the operation of satellite, like how the satellite is supposed to work actually. And the third time we went, we were actually making the satellites. So the picture on the right uh, side, we have is me and my uh, uh, teammates working together on this communication system, the communication system which allows the satellite to communicate with the ground. And the image on the left hand side, you see is just a circuit board which we developed, which is a part of a satellite. Um, so this satellite, which I was working on called InspireSat1. Um, so Inspire, in, Inspire is an organization of international universities, which are space oriented. Uh, and this, the aim of this uh, organization is to give hands on experience to students on how to make satellites, what goes into it and all those things. 
right now this organization is making four satellites and i was working on the very first satellite we were making so all the countries involved in this organization is india taiwan singapore usa canada and france and there are some more countries which joined recently which i am not aware of um from india iist is the only institute which is part of this um so yes I, as a student of iist i got opportunity to work on this since by said um doing so yeah here i want to show you the satellite which we have made so the screen the image on the left hand side you see is a completed satellite right now the satellite is going under testings and uh, we are expected to launch either this fourth quarter of this year or maybe first quarter of next year depending upon how the covid situation you know cools down so right now the satellite is going under testing we have other things to show which is this is a best pick this is a, my favorite pick from all this uh, development of the satellite this big shows like how you know stressful or how you know like there can be situations when you do not agree with your teammates in the center i'm standing and on my left and right we have people and they are arguing and i am just not convinced with these arguments there are, there will be times when you will feel isolated and there was one time of course there were times when i was feeling isolated and again as i said uh, the best thing about being at the bottom is the only way you can move is up there's you cannot go even less than that you cannot go below now this is the bottom most level for you so apart from all this work and everything so did point out that uh, boulder is an like amazing very beautiful place to be at if you if someone asks me where do you want to live on this earth like which place boulder will be the place which i will choose so this is a boulder during winter this is a i this photo i took uh, from the balcony of my apartment uh, i think in february and this is a pic which i took from the balcony of my apartment again but this time in spring so you can see like how vibrant and uh, you know ever changing environment it is in boulder and now after completing my undergrad at iist i happened to be at the top of my branch and i was awarded satish devan fellowship and i have been sent here to complete my masters uh, so of course there's a pick of me uh, with a, a caltech California Institute of Technology, and the pic on the left, uh, you see, is a robot which I made uh, with my team. Uh, this robot is supposed to assemble blocks uh, in a configuration in whatever configuration you tell it to. So this is just one of the thing which we made uh, here together. There were other things which I have not put on the slides. Um, there is no need. I just wanted you to get a. just of uh, how things are here well and all of a sudden covid-19 hits and out of like it's a big surprise to all of us and suddenly all of our classes and everything just went online just a picture of us in an online class in a discussion and just a few weeks ago i graduated from calcutta caltech and now i'm doing my internship at a jet propulsion lab nasa and once i'm done with this internship i'll join isro so this was you know a brief uh, talk uh, like this was a brief uh, description of my journey till now the question is uh, what is what are the paths what are the path you have to take you know in future and how can you proceed what 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 can you keep in your mind uh, as you move forward well i already have courage and decisions you have to make talk about the motivation and the luck you need to have i talk about opportunities i talk about excitement and how you need to make sure that uh, you do thing which makes you stand out of the crowd well i think i would like to point a few more things one of the most important thing is you should do what you like you know 
I understand that in India, um, everyone wants to be an engineer or a doctor, you know, a scientist or IAS. Well, engineer and doctor are the first two choices, I believe, for an Indian family. I mean, my parents also wanted me to be an engineer. My sisters to be doctor. Um, I happen to be lucky one. I'm lucky because uh, I happen to like being an engineer. I happen to like physics, chemistry, math. I happen to like these electrical engineering, this softwares and everything. I just happen to be in the field which I like. My sister was not uh, lucky enough, right? She was not that much interested in doctor because if she would have, she would be already one, but she is not. So it's important for you to do what you like. And it's difficult in India, you know. It's difficult to go against the social norms and say that, no, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. Well, honestly, this is a secondary problem. The first problem comes is to find out what actually you like. I mean, I have come across a lot of people, I mean, my friends in India and everyone, my school friends and everyone, my college friends, they themselves don't know what is it they really want to do in, in their life. What is it that they enjoy so much that they will like to work on it for the rest of their life, that they want to adopt that thing as a profession. So it's important for you to find out what exactly you like. And it's difficult in India especially because we have very limited resources. I mean, after coming to the United States, I realized that how good, like what is the high standard of living called? Like why, what is, how is it different, the standard of living we have in India? I realized, I saw that how students here, how, you know, how children here are provided so many different opportunities so many things to explore so many so much of resources they provide you that you you can explore every single thing you want you want to be a gymnastic you have a resource here you want to be uh you want to be a golfer so be it like you have resource you are provided the resources here to explore and find out what exactly you like well in india also we have resources it's just the resources are limited you had to work a little bit harder. You had to work a little bit harder compared to the people here in the United States or in a developed country in general. And that's okay. Indians, in fact, Asians in general, they work very hard because we need to fight for things we want, right? We have very limited sources. So explore your options. Well, maybe right now you might not be able to explore much. Um, but I guess as you join your college, you might be able to explore much. In terms of exploration, I can tell you, for example, let's say you have, uh, if you score a good uh, ground and you have football, cricket, basketball, volleyball, explore, you know, go and play, see if you like it. And of course, there will be something you will like. There will be some sport you will like. The question is, are you going to follow on? The question is, are you going to take this opportunity? and work on it. Are you going to go every day for this, for football, for basketball, maybe for volleyball? Are you going to go for practice? Are you going to look exclusively for opportunities to play at the city level, to play at the state level? So here I'm trying to tell you is the studies are not the only thing. And believe me, you have to do what you actually like to do. If you want to be a volleyball player, go for it. Don't, I mean, I understand there are concerns like a, money, salary, and uh, will you be able to survive, have a decent life? I understand that. That's concern for everyone. The only thing you have to keep in mind is if you do what you like, if you make it your profession, you will really be happy. You will be so happy. You will work hard in that field that you will make yourself an excellent. You will be demanded you will be in demand. So if you're doing what you like, then you don't have to actually worry about money. Things will follow on. All you have to do is do the thing with passion and excitement and motivation.
And that can be achieved only when you do what you like. But I'm not asking you to stop the school, to not to go for college or, not, or, not, or stop concentrating on your studies. I'm asking you to explore and keep in your mind what exactly you like. Make a plan. And you cannot escape class 12th exams. You cannot escape class 10th exams. And you're not allowed to. Everyone should have a basic, uh, you know, a, a basic uh, uh, knowledge and basic level of understanding. You have to pass class 12th. The question is, after class, after 12th, are you going to follow your dreams? Are you going to do what you like? Uh, are you going to follow your passion? That depends upon you. And please, you have to make sure you plan properly. You have to make sure you already talk to your parents or you already talk to your guardians or your friends. Make sure you are taking the right decision. It's important. It's one of the decisions in your life which you will carry throughout your life. And honestly, it's, I mean, I don't think it is a surprise for you, but well, I guess it is because this learning curve is the only place where a person who is telling you to not to concentrate too much on academics if you don't want to. Well, don't concentrate too much on academics only when you know what you like, only when you have a plan. And everyone needs a backup plan. So keep a backup plan ready, which obviously include having a decent job, uh, and that one easy way to get a decent job by studying by academics. So there's that. And of course, the field of sports is a very tough field. A lot of competition, just like in IITs and doctors, you know, IITs and all these uh, MBBS, all this thing. Nothing is easy. Everything is hard. And you have to work hard for it. You have to earn it. And next thing is you have to think and ask. You have to think about what kind of life you want for yourself. You have to think about, are you happy right now? Are you happy with the way of life you have right now? Do you know how to improve? Are you trying to improve your life? As long as you're trying, everything is good. The moment you stop trying, that's when the trouble begins, right? It's okay. I mean, in India, as I said, we have to work hard to earn things, right? It's okay to not to have a very good lifestyle right now. That's perfectly fine. What is not fine is when you stop trying, you know. So keep thinking about uh, how you are. What's your status? Are you improving it? Are you trying? I mean, let, sorry. Let's say you let's say you are really too much into academics and you really love physics, chemistry, math, and you really want to be a scientist or an astronaut or maybe something else. So you want to join army, you want to join air force, or you want to be a soccer player. The question is, are you, you know, working towards it? Are you planning towards it? So that's something for you to think and ask yourself. And one of the important thing is look back at your past, right? Around nowadays, I mean, we all are surrounded by social media, by this laptop, internet, our mobile phones, our friends, our family, everywhere we have interaction. But it's important for you to find some time for yourself. You know, I am not a very talkative pers person. I spend a lot of time just to myself, just sitting there, not looking at the phone, not looking at my laptop, not looking at a book, just sitting there thinking what I had done in my past. What, have, what actions did I take in past few weeks, in past few months, in past few years? How was I? How am I? How did I become the person I am? What are the mistakes I made? You had to give yourself some time. I mean, there's a history. History is there for some reason, right? History is there so that it cannot be repeated, so that you don't repeat it. Your history, the life you have lived so far, it tells you something about yourself, right? So find out the mistakes you made, find out things you did wrong, find out things you wish you had not done, and make sure you don't do it again. Because if you repeat your mistake, then that's the signal that you're not trying hard. You're not trying hard to improve yourself. 
you know, trying hard to improve situation of your family or your relatives or, or your social society in general. You improve yourself, you're improving society, right? You're part of society. So you have to learn from your must. And next thing is change. You know, as humans, we are very resistant to any kind of change, you know, very resistant. Because, of course, if you think about how our ancestors were, we were hunting and gathering society in the very, when we started being a civilized person, right? A homo sapiens, we hunt together, we eat together, we live together, we survive together. So if something is, some, if there's something in your life which is not hurting you, and that is going to change, then it's human instinct, is your brain, is your emotions, which resist it. Because as your emotions, your brain does not know whether this change which is happening, is it good or bad? Whether uh, we're going to be happier, whether you're going to be sad, you don't know, right? So that's why we resist change. And if someone say that I'm a person who really likes change, he or she is lying. It's the human instinct. You cannot do anything about it. All you can do is try hard, try to embrace it, try to improve yourself, be ready to change. And of course, it's okay to be lazy. Dude, I'm a lazy person. Actually, you cannot say that a person is lazy or not. Someone might be lazy in doing something. The same person could be very active when he's doing something else. So you cannot say a person is lazy. If you are lazy in completing your homework, that's OK. You might not be lazy in going on a run, improving yourself, making your soccer skills, football skills better. You might not be lazy in that, right? Well, laziness is something which we all have to overcome from time to time. There are things which we don't want to do, but there are things which have to be done, and you have to do it. So you have to improve yourself. It's okay to be lazy. Just make sure you learn from your past. Make sure you accept the change and be ready to change yourself. And last thing I want to talk about is achievements. Well, you know, you look at everyone else, you know, you look at people, like those who achieved things, you know, you look at a, like APJ of the club, you look at a, someone, let's say, um, a Feynman Richard, a famous physicist here in the United States who was a part of Manhattan Project because of which the nuclear bomb was made. You might have heard about Newton, Einstein, they all have achieved things, right? Well, they are, okay, they are very different kind of people in this world. And I believe they are two, I mean, at least they are two kind of people, right? A set of people who really get amazed by looking at the achievements of what others have achieved, right? I feel like they are just sheep, you know, just following what others have done. They're just following what... Um, has been all done by these people who achieved this. The, these people look at others and get amazed. And the other set of people who look at these people, these highly successful people, and they don't get amazed. I belong to the second set. I, I, I mean, there are people whom I admire, but I'm not crazy about people whom, you know, who have achieved success in their life or anything like that. What is important here is uh, not what others have achieved. What is important for you is what you have achieved. And you have a long life. Achieve whatever you want. Achieve what you can achieve. But the thing is, once you achieved it, it loses its, its importance. Keep in mind, like, uh, I never thought that I'll be near the United States at all. I never thought that I will be working for Israel. Uh, before coming to Caltech, Caltech is a highly, a big prestigious institute in the world. And doing masters from Caltech was a very big deal for me before I joined Caltech. 
So once I joined Caltech, once now I completed my master's, a master's degree from this California Institute of Technology is not a big deal for me. It can be a big deal for everyone else or someone else. It may or may not, but for me, it's not. And that's the spirit I want you guys to have. You know, always keep moving forward. It's not like you achieve something and you be satisfied. Having satisfied is the worst thing can ever happen to you. So all you have to do is, you know, work hard to satisfy yourself, you know, but at the same time, don't be ever satisfied. The moment you're satisfied, that's the point you stop trying harder. That's the point when you stop improving yourself. So go ahead, achieve things, but don't get stuck to them. Don't think that, okay, I am Prime Minister of India, that's it. No, that's not it. There are things you can do more. There are things we can achieve as a Prime Minister of India. So never be satisfied. Keep working. Keep moving forward, OK? And last thing, setbacks. You will be disturbed sometimes. Believe me, um, you know, right now, if I think about my past and think about what are the points, what are the time instances when I was sad, and I feel like those were some silly re reasons. Everything seems silly when you look back in the past. But when you are going through the setback, when you're going through this difficult time, that's when you know how it exactly feels to go through it. Well, here's the cartoon, you know, you write a code, you run the code, the code doesn't work, and the code doesn't work. You put so much time and effort in the thing you have been trying to achieve, and yet you didn't. You may ask questions to yourself, like, why is this happened? Why is it you and not someone else? Why, where is it where you missed? What is it you have not done? What is it you could have done differently to achieve something? That's okay. There will be setbacks. There have been a lot of setbacks in my life. For example, that the fourth position of Blue House when I was a captain. Uh, when I didn't get into IST, when I was really anxious and unsettled about what is going to happen to my future now. During this all nano satellite work, when I was isolated from whole team and I didn't know how to convince people, how to tell them that what they are doing is not right, it's not the right way. So there will be setbacks. You have to embrace it. And believe me, as humans, we have capability to go through the worst of our times, you know? There will be times when things are so bad, but I'm pretty sure you will make it up. I'm sure that you will go through that point. And once you look back in your past and think about that time and think about how you did it, you'll be surprised at yourself. You'll be thinking that how was I able to, you know, go through it? How did I survive that instant, that setback? And you'll be amazed of the things you're capable of. You'll be amazed of your enduring capabilities. So it's OK. Setbacks are important. Failures are important. If there are no failures, then how, you will never learn how to be more careful, how to work harder, how to be you know, more accessible to other people. And this does not only apply to your professional life, it also applies to your personal life, of course. So yeah, it's OK to be at the bottom, because the only way you can move is up and up and up, right? So that was all about my journey. And that was all the thing which I wanted to talk about today. And I'm pretty sure. Um, you all have been you have all have excited stories to share right now and i'm sure you will make a good story a, a good story which is good enough to tell next generation and the generation after that and the generation after that an interesting story of your life so yes good luck for your journey that's all i had for today thank you very much ankit and 
thanks a lot for sharing everything what you just shared with all of our viewers with all of our students and i'm pretty sure that all of our students will take benefit will learn with your story and do well in their life for their country thanks a lot ankit